Before we get to this first story in our rundown, let me preface it by saying I myself have gotten a little bored with the endless JD Vance going after women's stories, right? It's kind of repetitive at this point. However, however, this latest report by CNN must be discussed. Let's must do it. Be. <laughs> Let's do it. All of us were, were hit with a little bit of a political sucker punch. The bad news is that Kamala Harris does not have the same baggage as Joe Biden because Whatever we might say, Kamala Harris is a lot younger, and Kamala Harris is obviously uh, not struggling in the same ways that Joe Biden did. Well, that was a rather damning admission by vice presidential pick J.D. Vance. Of course, he's the Republican vice presidential pick for Donald Trump. While they both like to put on a brave face in public in regard to their chances at beating Kamala Harris now that she is the presumptive Democratic nominee, Behind the scenes, there seems to be a bit of panic. And the Washington Post unearthed that audio. We're gonna get to more of it in just a moment. But before we do, and by the way, stick around for more of that audio, it's incredible. But before we do, I do wanna also talk about other video that has been unearthed by CNN, specifically of JD Vance referring to childless couples or childless Americans as um, psychopathic. Let's take a look. Hmm. There's just these basic cadences of life that I think are really powerful and really, really valuable when you have kids in your life. And the fact that so many people, especially in America's leadership class, just don't have that in their lives. You know, I, I worry that it makes people more sociopathic and ultimately our whole country a little bit less. Uh, a, a less mentally stable. And of course, you talk about going on Twitter. Final point I'll make is you, you go on Twitter and almost always the people who are most deranged and most psychotic are people who don't have kids at home. Psychotic, sociopathic. Now, that wasn't the first time he used that type of language. In fact, uh, he made similar comments in May of 2019. Take a look. I've seen people who become more attached to their communities, to their families, to their country because they have children. So I would say that we should care about declining fertility, not just because it's bad for our economy, but because we think babies are good. And we think babies are good because we're not sociopaths. This is one of the most ironic arguments a man who is obsessed with other people's personal lives can possibly make. And Donald Trump tried to soften JD Vance's message, which we'll get to in just a moment. But Jenk, what are your thoughts on the latest unearthed videos? Hey, don't scroll away, come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just wanna urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting, you do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. So first on the one where he's being honest about how Kamala Harris is clearly a better candidate than Joe Biden. Um, is it interesting that they always say the things that are true when they're talking privately to donors? So that includes uh, the Democrats. Joe Biden, remember, said the most true thing he's ever said when he told the donors, don't worry, nothing will fundamentally change. Because Joe Biden is the status quo candidate, so he told the donors that in a frank way in the last uh, cycle. Now, this time around, uh, Donald Trump went to the oil uh, donors and said, give me a billion dollars and I'll give you everything you want, tax cuts, deregulation, etc. Now, here's a JD Vance speaking his true mind, which is, oh, we're screwed. <laughs> we thought we were gonna beat Biden easy and now we're worried about Kamala Harris. That's obviously true, right? So, all right, now we turn to the psychotic comments. Look, I, I jokingly referred to JD Vance as a serial killer a couple of times. He has the he has serial killer eyes. So it's ironic when he starts talking about other people being psychotic and sociopathic. And I have a theory on it. So look, there's the larger, more important issue of how MAGA breaks down. And I want to talk about that a little bit more as well, which is I think they're now broken down in two categories. One is Christian right slash Christian nationalists. The other is just bros, bros like Dave Portnoy and Joe Rogan, etc. And the bros don't really agree with the Christian nationalists and the no. Christian nationalists don't necessarily agree with the bros. And so we're at a really interesting point here where there's a divergence. They both agree on Trump, but they don't both agree on JD Vance. So the reason, but now back to JD Vance and in particular to him. And my theory, and by guys, this is speculation, okay? Is that he doesn't feel a lot of empathy for other people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's how sociopaths are, and that's how Donald Trump is. And that's why he can make this giant pivot from like a liberal who thinks Trump is Hitler to, ah, Trump's great, because. He doesn't care, he doesn't care about other people, he doesn't care about how it affects things. But 
once he had kids, he was like, "Oh wow, I now have feelings. I care about these other human beings in a way that I've never cared about before. So what he does is a very classic psychological phenomena, projection. So he assumes that you don't care about any other human being until you've had kids. So I think that's why he says it over and over and over again, because that was his experience. Look, just based on his book, uh, Hillbilly Elegy, I think that J.D. Vance, and I don't say this as an insult, I actually genuinely mean this earnestly. I think that he has gone through some significant trauma in his youth that has not really been addressed. And I think that he needs to address it in a healthier way, potentially through seeing a therapist, talking to some sort of counselor, I don't know. But the way that he lashes out at people who are just minding their own business and living their own lives is very strange to me. And he still doesn't seem to understand how utterly unappealing that message is, not just to the left, right? He's not trying to appeal to the left. The left already has its heels dug in, in voting for Kamala Harris in this race. But really the race is boiling down to those swing voters, those independent voters. And these are individuals who are turned off by this kind of messaging because it's not about, you know, uh, uber leftists who have decided that they don't want to have children because they're concerned about climate change. There are all sorts of people all throughout the country who don't have children for a number of different reasons as we've talked about before. It could be due to health concerns, it could be because they haven't found the right individual to have children with. And he keeps doubling down on this insane unpopular message, which brings me to Donald Trump, who's trying to kind of soften the message from J.D. Vance. He did so while speaking to Laura Ingram. This was a recent interview. Let's take a look at what Trump had to say. He's got tremendous support, and he really does among a certain group of people, people that like families. I mean, you know, he made a statement having to do with families. That doesn't mean that people that aren't a member of a big and beautiful family with 400 children around and everything else, it doesn't mean that a person doesn't have, he's not against anything. But he, he loves family, it's very important to him. He grew up in a very interesting family situation and he feels family is good. And I don't think there's anything wrong in saying that. But I know so many people, they, they never met the right person, or male or female, they just never met the right person. Uh, they're unbelievable, they're every bit as good as anybody else. I think a lot of people like family and sometimes it doesn't work out. And you know why, it you don't meet the right person or you don't meet any person. But you're just as good in many cases a lot better than a person that's in a family situation. I thought those statements were, first of all, important for Trump to say if he wants a shot at you know distancing himself from this Christian nationalist type of messaging that we're hearing from JD Vance. But I also find it fascinating that he is distancing himself from his own VP pick. Yeah, but I thought that was actually relatively well done. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the one part that I was amused by was he, 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 does well with people that like family. I know, but I love family. <laughs> I'm with my family, and when I say family, like I visit my parents and I spend like pretty much the entire day with them every Sunday. Friday night, I was with all of my nieces and my nephew. Like, I love family too. Because just because someone has decided they don't want to have children doesn't mean they don't love family. Yeah. Well, there's two other funny parts of that. There's one person who might not love family. And that's Donald Trump, right? <laughs> that's why it's kind of funny. I mean, he also said today that uh, that his wife might like him or love him, but he's not entirely sure, right? And you know, uh, we, he forgets Tiffany all the time. We cover all but this. He, he, I'm sure right. he feels that some members of his family are very fine people. Some are very fine people. <laughs> it is uh, one on each side. But he, he's also referring now to a larger political point. He's also referring to Christian. Uh, evangelicals, etc., because they're much more focused on family values, family issues. Now, he doesn't really live up to any of that, as we all know. We don't have to rehash all of his porn habits and sex habits, etc. Uh, and that's why he refers to those people as other people. Mm -hmm. He he appeals to people that like families. Um, he doesn't view himself in that category because he's not really a Christian nationalist, etc. He's a Trump nationalist. He just cares about himself. He's just <laughs> gathering these people in order to win. And but to be fair to him, he's doing it in a more savvy way than J.D. Vance. He's is. definitely more inclusive. He's definitely savvier than J.D. Vance. He has his finger on the pulse. Uh, 
certainly more than JD Vance does. And I look again, I do think that he dealt with that question really well. But again, it's not really a good sign when the man at the top of the ticket is trying to distance himself from his own VP pick, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he understands how much of a liability JD Vance's past statements have been. And he also seems to understand how much of a liability uh, the way JD Vance has handled this situation has been, right? So, with that in mind, I want to talk a little more about that uh, audio that the Washington Post obtained featuring JD Vance sharing his concerns about Kamala Harris now being the presumptive Democratic nominee. Because uh, during that same conversation, he also talked about what he believed believes needs to be done in order to ensure that Trump beats Kamala Harris in the general election. Let's take a look. We wonder how is the world caught on fire? How is there a new war in seemingly every continent in the world? And it's because Kamala and the Democrats lied about Joe Biden. It kind of leads into the good news because no person in the United States of America owns the disastrous Harris Biden agenda more than his own vice president of the United States. So he kind of complained about how Biden's baggage isn't really following Kamala Harris in this race. And so he's saying that the messaging from the Trump campaign and the Republican Party should be focused on essentially placing the blame of some of Biden's failed policies or some of you know Biden's foibles onto Kamala Harris's shoulders, namely things like the ongoing wars in Ukraine and in Gaza, and also the failures at the southern border. Yeah, and so I think that here, I'm gonna read a comment from one of our YouTube members, Matt, Matt aka Drock Bach Dragon writes, and I keep hearing talk that the hashtag tiny fisted tangerine tyrant will replace Vance. It'll never happen, he'd have to admit that he made a mistake. So on the one hand, I'm dying to go tick, 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 tick on replacing JD Vance, but I that would be a giant move and it would be, just, Smell of panic. Mm-hmm. Um, now, on the other hand, has uh, Donald Trump uh, admitted to mistakes uh, through firing people before? Oh, endlessly. I mean, he never admits to being wrong, but he says Jeff Sessions not very happy with my Attorney General. You know, and he just says like he fired so many people yeah. and blamed all of their his problems on them. He's like the world's worst manager, but he does fire people. He does fire people while also simultaneously maintaining that he hires the best people, which is amazing. Like <laughs> yeah. and people totally believe it. Yeah. Right? So, so in order to be part of the show by the way, hit the join button below. They, that's why we read the member comments, but back to how they're going to deal with Kamala Harris. Look, they're going to it tried to say that she's responsible, she knew all along, etc. It's not that bad attack. I actually am just strategically speaking, I'm surprised that they haven't been able to land that blow effectively yet at all. Well, they've been playing defense ever mm. since she was the presumptive Democratic nominee. And that's never a good position to be in politically speaking. I The strong area of the Trump campaign has always been playing offense. Yeah. And they've been so distracted in playing defense as it pertains to like JD Vance's controversial comments that they haven't really been able to root that anti Kamala Harris messaging, especially the messaging, which I agree with you, I think would be effective in regard to hiding the genuine true condition that Joe Biden was in prior to the debate. Yeah, and last thing is that in in the midst of them playing defense, which they're doing a lot of lately, all of a sudden now we're showing significant fissures too. Because there's a anti-abortion leader that came out today going, no, this is unacceptable. They have to try to ban all abortion nationwide. And he's very dissatisfied with Trump and and Vance for that. And on the other hand, you've got the bros that I talked about, Rogan, Portnoy, etc. And they're like, wait, I thought we were Republicans, we want to get out of people's lives. So now all of a sudden you guys are telling us how to live our lives and what should be legal or illegal based on your religious views. And now you're telling us that people without kids are worthless. Wait, this doesn't match our ideology at all. Because a lot of those bros aren't looking to have kids, right? Yeah, so, no, and some a- of them are, some of them aren't. And those are just two very different subsets of people who've never had to actually resolve 
their internal conflicts. That's such a great point. They haven't, and now they're kind of forced to, and it's really fascinating to watch it play out. Now, final thing that I'll say about how Trump is handling all of this messaging. So uh, the Associated Press reported today that uh, the director of the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025 has stepped down from his role. And the reason why he did that is because basically Trump pushed for him to, to be kicked out of the, the group. and. Look, there has been, in my opinion, an effective strategy by the Democrats to tie Donald Trump to Project 2025, even though, honestly, Trump isn't the one who penned it, Trump isn't the one who crafted it. The Heritage Foundation is separate from the Trump campaign, but Democrats have done a decent job in tying Trump to it. And I think it has hurt him politically, especially when you couple that story, Project 2025, with JD Vance's statements. And so he is trying to distance himself from like the far right Christian nationalist crowd. And I think that he will also do that with the individuals within the in the Republican Party who want like a federal ban on abortion. So it cuts two ways there, guys. Number one, I don't know what to believe about Project 2025. I don't really trust Trump, those are all Trump Loyalists that wrote Project 2025. They worked in it. A lot of them worked in the Trump administration before. A lot of them will definitely work in the Trump administration next time around. So I think that they maybe got their hand caught in the cookie jar there, showing you all the terrible things that they were so excited to do. And I thought that they got to a point where they thought there's no accountability. Mm-hmm. We could just tell people we're gonna be fascist and it's not gonna have consequences. But hey, the Democrats played it well. And there were apparently enough electoral and political consequences that Trump decided to bail on them. Which gets to the second point, which is that Trump is not an unsavvy politician. He's he's not bright, he doesn't know a lot of things, right? But he has a nose for what's popular, cuz that's what a con man has to know, hey, what works on my mark, right? What's going to convince that person to like me, trust me, and give me their confidence? So he senses the country is not in favor of banning abortion, and the country did not like Project 2025. So he had enough political sense to basically hit the eject button and go, there you go, Project 2025. Right or wrong, whether he actually means it or not, he's at least gotten rid of it for his political campaign, which is savvy. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.